record number of Americans, upwards of 67 million, go to the polls to elect the 35th President of the United States. Citizens from Maine to Hawaii record their choices as the attention of the entire globe focuses on the contest for the leadership of the most powerful nation of the free world. The Democratic nominee is an early favorite, and first returns bear out predictions in Mr. Kennedy's favor. But GOP standard bearer Richard Nixon is staunchly supported, not least by President Eisenhower, who is up early, arriving at 6.18 a.m. at Cumberland Township, Pennsylvania, near his Gettysburg farm, to cast his ballot. Notwithstanding Ike's support, Pennsylvania's crucial 32 electoral votes were carried by Kennedy. Mrs. Eisenhower followed the president late in the day and left no doubt as to her preference as she cast her vote in the tiny Pennsylvania firehouse. Eager crowds gathered outside the West End branch of the Boston Public Library as Senator Kennedy and his pretty wife arrived at the polling place early on election day before flying on to Cape Cod to await the outcome. Vice President Nixon and his wife, Pat, vote in the playroom of a private home in Whittier, California, the Los Angeles suburb where Mr. Nixon grew up. Mr. Nixon's running mate on the GOP ticket, Ambassador Henry Cabot Lodge, was almost totally overshadowed on election day by the popular concentration on the principles in one of the most strenuously contested election battles in the nation's history. Senator Lyndon Johnson, Mr. Kennedy's running mate, shared his counterpart's plight this election day as the vagaries of the popular ballot resulted in one of the closest national elections since 1916. An early lead established by Kennedy dwindled as Western and rural reports came in although a favorable trend was established in the early hours. As the Democratic Party nationally won 15 governorships and maintained its leadership in Congress and the Senate, the early Kennedy drive bogged down. Through the long hours of the night, as local districts tallied their results, the Kennedy column recorded an electoral vote frustratingly short of the 269 necessary to win. Port, Massachusetts residents, the Democratic candidate and his wife stoically waited out the returns, as did Vice President Nixon on the other side of the country, who even made a quick trip across the border for an election day lunch. That night, Mr. Nixon appeared at local GOP headquarters with his wife to the cheers of campaign workers. At almost 4 a.m., he virtually acknowledged defeat. As I look at the board here, uh, while the, there are still some results still to come in, uh, if the present trend continues, uh, if Mr. Kennedy, Senator Kennedy, will be the next president of the United States. <laughs> I want Senator Kennedy to know, and I want all of you to know, that uh, certainly if this trend does continue and uh, he does become our next president, that he will have my wholehearted support. And your that followed were frustrating and baffling as the key returns hung in the ballot. Not till the middle of the next day was the victory reclinched by one of the closest margins recorded, a plurality of barely over 300,000. The unexpectedly delayed climax saw Senator Kennedy the victor with a clear margin of electoral votes. At 43 years of age, he is the youngest man ever voted into the White House and the first Catholic chief executive in the history of the nation, with victories in the Southern Bible Belt, as well as the industrial centers of the North, to attest the shattering of a long-standing political taboo. In Mr. Kennedy's first public appearance after his election, accompanied by his wife, Jacqueline, his father, financier Joseph Kennedy, makes his first appearance since the campaign began. And the weary president-elect makes his first address in his new capacity, reading aloud his answer to Mr. Nixon's message of congratulations. In reply to the Vice President, I send him the following wire. Vice President Nixon, Los Angeles, California. Your sincere good wishes are gratefully accepted. You are to be congratulated on a fine race. I know that the nation can continue to count on your unswerving loyalty 
in whatever effort you undertake, and that you and I can maintain our long-standing cordial relations in the years ahead. Sincerely, John Kennedy. To all Americans, I say that uh, the next four years are going to be difficult and challenging years for us all. The election uh, may have been a close one, but I think that there is general agreement by all of our citizens that a supreme national effort will be needed in the years ahead to move this country safely through the 1960s. I ask your help in this effort, and I can assure you that uh, every degree of mind and spirit that I possess